Hey guys, so I realized in the last video I did for you, I probably didn't cover the difference between um, what is happening right now and the differences between, uh, I, I talked more about the differences between homeschooling and schooling at home, and I realized I missed something pretty dramatic that I probably should have covered. And it is the fact that one, when people start to homeschool, um, they think about that for a really long time before they do it. They do a lot of research, they do months of thinking it through, they weigh all of their options, they try to figure out whether or not the choice they're making is the best choice for their children. Um, they talk to other parents, they talk to uh, teachers, they talk. To, they probably attend a couple of homeschool conventions. Um, there's a lot of thought that goes into it prior to somebody saying, yes, I'm gonna homeschool. Um, people who do virtual school, which is kind of, I think what some of you may be dealing with, whose children are, are in public schools or, or private schools, is more of a virtual school model. And um, that also involves some preparation and some understanding and realizing like on, on a traditional homeschool model, you're homeschooling them anywhere between, usually between one to three hours a day, four max in high school, but usually between one to three hours a day. For a virtual school, you're looking at probably somewhere between three to six hours a day. It, it's a very different workload. It's a different, completely different model. And what you guys are looking at right now as this pandemic school model, nobody knows. We don't know if it's gonna be one hour a day and you're just gonna get some basic worksheets. We don't know if you have teachers that are going to expect your kids to be online all day long. And there's a lot of questions as to what this looks like. And none of you guys had time to think it through. You just got handed your kids and said, keep them home, we're working it out. That's overwhelming. So I, I just wanna give you guys some, the, the permission to give yourself grace. You don't know what this looks like. It is overwhelming. It is trying to figure it out. You didn't have time to think about this. Everyone wants to give you advice. This is the best curriculum to use. This is what you should use in the meantime. And, and, and I, I, I'm gonna give you a couple of hints that I think are really important. Um, one of the hints is, you know, I, I hear, I've heard people are like, well, this is a great reading curriculum. And you know what's a great reading curriculum? Um, go and download a Kindle app and read them Aesop's Fables or Gulliver's Travels or, oh, what's another good one? Count of Monte Cristo, Little Women. Uh, go read those and then read a chapter and ask them what they learned. That was reading comprehension. Guys, it's not rocket science, I promise you. It's okay to do reading in this kind of way. My kids love Aesop's Fables. In fact, if you wanna do history and reading all at once, I'll give you a hint, uh, go and look for the books by Janet and Jeff Benge. They are um, a whole bunch of biographies. I absolutely swear by them. Um, ben Carson, George Washington Carver, uh, a lot of great, great names, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln. Um, then you also have, you know, there's the Christian model of them that have you know, Christian heroes. Phenomenal books. You can get them on Audible. They can be read to your kids. You don't even have to do it. My kids listen to these books every night before they go to sleep. Um, it is, it, it, they're great. And you're giving them history. You're giving them reading. And if you ask them about it, you've now also made sure they've had a quiz or a test or whatever you wanna call it based on their comprehension. And they're learning. Guys, that's really sometimes as easy as it is. It, it, keep it simple, please. Um, if you're worried about math, Go to something like um, All-in-One Homeschool. It's called Easy Peasy Homeschool. There's a bunch of math worksheets that you can download and they can do uh, if you're into the drill and kill kind of thing. If you're <clears throat> if you're looking for an online curriculum, sorry, there's mosquitoes everywhere outside because we're in Florida. Um, if you're looking for a math curriculum, go and get teaching textbooks. It's I think they have like a 15 day free trial right now and that will cover you for at least a couple of weeks. And you know what, if they fall behind a couple of weeks in math, you know what happens? pretty much nothing. In fact, they could probably fall behind three months in math and it's not even gonna be that big of a deal because usually that's just called summer break. Um, it's gonna be okay, especially since the next year basically is the last few, last year summarized 
taught again next year. So like really this is a well-timed pandemic in the academic year. Class half full, huh? So I, I just want to calm you about what you've been handed and then also just, you know, give you my condolences that I know this is hard, but lower your bar for them. It's okay, lower your bar for you. It, your kids need their parent clear-headed right now and they need structure. Um, they don't need militant level structure, but they need some kind of structure. Basically what you would do over summer break, do the same thing now. And you know, it's, it's, it's okay to do arts and crafts and to do things that you're like, well, what about, what's, what's the skill level? You know what homeschooled parents don't think about? Skill levels, you really don't care. Um, I only know what grade my kids are in it because where I check them in in uh, church, that's pretty much it. Uh, I, I know that they're in certain levels based on math, but a lot of them, a couple of them are, are a couple of grades ahead, so that really doesn't count. Uh, I just kind of go by age, you know? I mean, it's it's the joke of, you know, well, how old are you, 12? Well, I guess it's a 12th grade, I don't really know. Maybe we'll go on to 14th. Um, it, it's, it's, it's okay. Um, I, I just definitely think that you guys need to take a deep breath and realize it's it's really gonna be okay, I promise. Um, when it comes to an academic thing. Pandemic-wise, that's all, like, that's a whole different ballgame. But when it comes to academic, it's okay. Just breathe. Let them go play. Let them go run outside. Let them do hopscotch. Let them play with sidewalk chalk and, and write all sorts of things and tell them to tell, you know, draw out a map of the United States and then name the states. And, and seriously, guys, it might challenge you. I've done this with my kids and realized that I probably should brush up on some capitals. Just saying, I probably, because mainly because I haven't really reviewed them since I was in the sixth grade. Because you know what happens when I need to know a state capital? I say, hey Alexa, what's the state capital of whatever state? And she tells me. We live in a beautiful time, guys. So, that's it. I just wanted to encourage you a little bit, alright? Uh, if you have any other questions, or I can offer any other help, please let me know. And that's it. Bye.